Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, my name is Stan Pinnell. I'm a senior account executive at Revelwood, and I'm joined by my colleague, Haley Elliott, who will be showing you today's overview demo of adaptive planning here in just a couple of minutes. Now, I just wanna take a few minutes to give you an idea of what to expect today. First, some background on Revelwood. We are a platinum business partner of Workday, and what that means is that we are part of an extremely select group of partners that help you evaluate and implement adaptive planning. We have over 25 plus years of experience and are made up of a diverse team of certified experienced consultants that bring decades of financial operations and system know-how. We've implemented over 150 adaptive customers over the past several years, and this list continues to grow. Not only that, but we also help existing adaptive customers with model enhancements, integrations, support services, and one-on-one -on -one training. I'm aware that some of you may be here because you have an active initiative to get into a cloud FP&A solution, and some of you may just be here to learn or you're curious. Either way, we greatly appreciate you taking 15 minutes with us in the next few days just to have a quick chat and see what your current challenges are, if you have any feedback and whether there are resources that we can follow up with. An important thing to know is that the demo today is meant to just really give you a glimpse into what adaptive planning can do. We should be finished in 45 minutes. And during that time, everyone will be on mute. But if you have a question, there is a Q&A button down at the bottom. Please enter it there and we will try to answer or get back to you after the webinar. If not, we will make sure to get back to you via email. Uh, here, the next slide just gives you an overview of some of Revelwood's client successes. We've had experience in many different industries, as you can see, and different size and types of organizations. I only have a few more slides before we get started with the demo. So first of all, adaptive planning is a place where you can do your modeling, reporting, and analytics all in one place. So everything that you need is in one solution and it will act as your central source of the truth, if you will. So typically we're talking with finance teams and of course we're pulling in the general ledger data, but adaptive can connect to really any data source that you need it to because at the end of the day, data is data, and you'll be able to bring all of that data together into one place to model and report on with confidence. And this slide gives you an idea of some of the areas of the business that you can model and plan using adaptive, as it is not limited to the core FP&A area of the organization. You can model out really any operational area of the business that you want with adaptive. So I'm sure you are thinking, this is really awesome stuff, Stan, but what separates adaptive from the rest of the pack? Great question, everyone. Adaptive runs on Elastic Hypercube technology, which is a patented workday technology, and that is a key competitive differentiator. I'm not going to talk about the technical specifics because it isn't important, but the reason it is key is because it makes the solution scalable and able to have an unlimited number of dimensions and unlimited number of versions, scenarios, levels, et cetera. And when your system needs more processing power, the system is intelligent and expands to give it to you. But what's equally important is that you have this power without losing ease of use and maintainability of the system. As you will see in the demo today, everything is extremely intuitive with drag and drop functionality so that the end users can own this system without assistance from IT. And that's why Adaptive has over 6,000 customers globally in all different industries today. This is way more than any of our competitors in the FP&A solution space. Did you also know that Adaptive has a 95% gross retention rate? This speaks to the value of what these customers are getting out of adaptive across all different types of industries, as you can see here. 
and this is growing rapidly. Our commitment to innovation and customer success is recognized by the industry. It's a product that gets the highest user ratings and delivers business agility in times of change. And you can expect the software to be easy to use, easy to implement, and easy to maintain as your business scales. Being ranked number one at ease of use, customer experience, satisfaction, usability, and best return on investment. This should make you very excited to see Haley's demo now. So Haley, I'll pass it over to you. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Dan, and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Haley Elliott. I'm also on the Revelwood team, pre-sales solutions consultant, which basically means I handle all of our demo scoping and making sure that y'all are fully implementing everything that can help you out. I've been working with Adaptive for two and a half years now and spent the first year of that actually leading implementations for small businesses and medium and large enterprise companies. So kind of the whole nine. Um, today, like Stan said, we're going to take a pretty um, high level look at Adaptive and some of the main capabilities, um, but absolutely happy to dive in on a follow up call to any sort of industry specific models that you might want to go into. What you're seeing on the screen now is the topics that we're actually going to walk through. Um, so we are going to start with the basics. So just the foundational data model. That's what we call it. That's really just a fancy term for the backbone um, of adaptive, the things that you're gonna see on every screen. From there, we're going to talk about scenario analysis, which especially with the crazy inflation and pricing changes, sourcing issues, uh, scenario analysis is definitely top of mind for a lot of us. And so we're going to take a look at active dashboards and how those can help out and facilitate some of that. We'll be focusing on the P&L in terms of financial statements. One thing to note there is that we do typically build out a full three financial statement model. So your income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow, and that cash flow can be indirect or direct. Uh, modeling, we're going to focus on workforce planning just to get a sense of one of the sheet types in adaptive, but again, that's where I would encourage uh, questions and that kind of thing. And then we'll finish up with two additional types of visualization, the drag and drop functionality behind our ad hoc reporting and more formalized board reporting with our Microsoft Office 365 plugin. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and take us into adaptive. Um, as uh, Stan mentioned, feel free to pop questions in the chat as you'll have them, and I'm happy to address as many as I can at the end, or like I said, follow up through an email or a call. Um, so you should be seeing my home screen now in Adaptive. So I say this is my home screen because you can actually configure this view on an end user by end user basis. Um, so while I like getting a view of just my summary company metrics and key KPIs, uh, you're actually able to configure this to be a specific sheet, a specific report, if you want an operational dashboard, um, anything like that, even just company announcements of when the budget's due. So that's going to be consistent throughout the system is the ability to customize the experience for different end users. And as we all know, if we've ever adopted a new system, that customization is really important for adoption across the organization. So we're going to kick off with two basics, um, our level structure and our version. You're going to see these on basically every screen. Levels are your organizational structure. So right now I have mine set up to be regions and departments. This could be projects, cost centers, um, kind of just thinking the business units that you typically like to plan around. Levels are also going to be your first line of security in Adaptive. So typically what you'll do is assign an end user or a group of end users to their specific level or levels. And every single dashboard, report, and sheet is going to be automatically filtered to that. Uh, so the idea here is that if you are currently in something like Excel, you're probably used to managing 20 different tabs for all your departments or worse. In Adaptive, you have one template for your sheets, one template for a dashboard, and the level structure will handle the actual filtering of data for you. So it's taking that maintenance piece out. 
Um, super flexible structure and adaptive as well. So as you go through acquisitions, you can see I have some proposed acquisitions in here. It's just a plus button in the back end. Uh, so it's quite easy as you do grow um, to make adjustments to your organizational structure. The other piece here is going to be versions. So you do get an unlimited number of versions of Sports Day Adaptive Planning. There's no additional charge on your subscription for kind of how much data you're loading in. You will be on the same platform as our largest customers. Um, so you can imagine as well the scalability you get there. You'll notice a couple of these have lock icons. So they're locked versions. You'll normally use these for something like a board approved budget um, where you don't want end users to be able to make changes to the data but you do want them to be able to kind of view it or pull it into a report for a budget versus actuals comparison, maybe even replicate it into next month's forecast if you want to manage a rolling forecast. So lots of possibilities with versions. And this is also where you can start to imagine having um, a lot of different scenario analysis versions as well. So two key elements to get us oriented in the system. Next, I do want to move more into what we're seeing on the screen here. We're actually going to start in dashboards and then work backwards into the financial statements and modeling. Um, so dashboards and adaptive are called dashboard or active dashboards for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that you are actually able to drill into any of the numbers you see. So flat data, cool, we can get that at Excel. Uh, what's important here is making your data actually tell a story for you. And so we have two options when we click on any number in a dashboard or even a report. The first one of those is to explore data. Um, and that's just going to open up a cell explorer that gives me information on what departments are generating that number. If there's any specific dimensionality tied to it. Can also take me all the way back to the input model that is actually driving this final revenue number. And then probably most important, there's actually an audit trail attached to every single piece of data in Adaptive. And so these audit trails will tell you who made changes to the data, when they made the change, and what the change was. Uh, so you can either do that on a line item by line item basis or pull an audit trail report for the entire system. So pretty uh, Good, you know, when you do start bringing in more stakeholders into the budget, which will help introduce accountability and all that, um, that's a really great way to just be able to look at a number and be like, oh, that's a little weird. Um, and then you can just drill down and see who contributed to it. That's going to help you figure out who to talk to. The other option when I clicked into this was a dimensional drill down path. So one important thing to note here is that these drill down paths are automatically generated and adaptive. The reason I call that out is because in a lot of platforms, you actually have to code these drill down paths in. And during implementation, you'll sometimes have to actually decide what order you want to drill down in. And then changing that a year later is basically impossible on your own unless you know a coding language. Um, and adaptive, though, as soon as I add a new dimension to a model, it's going to appear in this list for me to start pivoting data by. So, for instance, if I start wanting to drill down into product groups, maybe I want to see specific products or customers. And you get the idea. You can start going down in any order uh, that you would like to to figure out what actually makes up that final revenue number. And that's true for any other KPI that we see on these dashboards. The last reason that we actually call these active is that since adaptive is one database, and that's an important question to always ask as you're evaluating a software is, hey, is everything actually in one place? Or am I having to run processes and wait overnight for things to sync up? In Adaptive, since everything is on one database, I can actually bring my planning models directly onto my dashboard. Um, and so if I actually want to ask the question, what happens if my sales north department is just absolutely killing it? Maybe we want to see what happens if they actually sell 15% more units. Uh, this is more of a tangible goods model I'm showing. Um, but if we just want to know what happens if a driver changes or what happens if we exceed a specific target, I can go ahead and just change that directly on my dashboard. Save, and you're going to see a little dot, dot, dot that's just saying that all of these graphs 
maps and visualizations are actually updating based on the data I just changed. Um, so a lot of you, especially if you do have past experience with some older systems, this is not a capability that really existed. Um, but with adaptive, again, bringing your models and your reports together so that any updates you make um, are immediately reflected on your dashboards and reports. That change I just made in the Sales North department also automatically aggregates up my level structure. So you're no longer having to take time to manually consolidate all of the budget files that your department managers are actually handing you. You can set these up as snapshot schedules as well. So if you have maybe an exec team or a C-suite who actually likes to be able to get the snapshot summary of company metrics on a regular basis, you can set it and forget it. So just put their email in, tell Adaptive how often you want them to get a summary like this, and uh, they'll get this exact kind of image sent to them. The last piece I'll mention on dashboards is just the ease of building them. So you don't actually need IT at all to be able to build out anything in Adaptive, really. I personally have no uh, CS background, don't code myself. And like I said, I implemented Adaptive for some of the uh, largest companies you can probably think of. Uh, so the idea is, though, if I come in and just click that edit button, I immediately have access to a bunch of different charts. They're constantly adding new ones here. Uh, but the idea is I can just come over drag the chart onto my dashboard, and I'm going to have access to every single account in Adaptive. So it's not just your GL data, but Adaptive can also handle any type of um, forecasted data. If you want to bring in workforce, your employee roster, if any of you are in the manufacturing industry, maybe you want to start bringing in unit counts, utilization, yields, that kind of thing. So the idea is if you have operational metrics or statistical, statistical accounts you want to bring in, um, you'll actually be able to display all of those right next to each other. Because again, adaptive data agnostic, it doesn't care what you're bringing in, data is data. So those are dashboards. Go ahead and keep us moving. Um, before we pop into the income statement, I do want to quickly walk us through navigation. Uh, so the reason I do this is so you can see that your entire planning, reporting, and analytics process is in one pane. You sign into one location, you're going to have access to every piece of your budgeting, forecasting, um, like I said, analytics process. So sheets where we're about to go um, are kind of like your data entry sheets. So if you are used to Excel, something like your workbooks, your worksheets, but again, you're not having to have 20 different templates of the exact same thing you have that level structure as well. Assumptions are going to be any key drivers you have. So things like um, average sales prices, if you have tax rates you wanna put in, shipping, freight, really any global drivers that you just wanna set and manage in one location. And as I change these individual drivers, uh, it'll update everywhere that account is referenced. So you're not hard coding and having to go back and find everywhere you keyed in a year-over-year -year growth target or something like that, change it in one place and you're good to go. We'll come back to reports. I'm not going into consolidations today, but Adaptive does have a module to actually manage your intercompany eliminations if your ERP doesn't currently do that, so always an option. And then we also do have a process tracker and workflow to kind of create checklists for people. Maybe you want to have a finance calendar so everyone can see when people have completed their different tasks, that kind of thing. This is where you would manage that. The last two pieces I'll cover here before we do go into some sheets are integration and support. So as I've said a couple of times, Adaptive is data agnostic. Um, so we do have a native integration platform. We don't use a third party like Mongo or anything like that. So in terms of data security, you are going direct from the source system into design integrations. There's no third party or middleman. Um, we can, like I said, connect to any source system. And typically what we'll do is set up a task to automatically load your GL balances, transactions, or any other types of data you'd like to. You, that'll maybe take a minute or two to actually load in those balances and transactional detail. No one even knows it's running. So you're also not kicking anyone out of the system. 
by having a task run and update your actuals. You do also have the option though to import uh, data manually. So if there's something that you don't necessarily need updated every day, every 15 minutes, something like that, uh, you can just go ahead, uh, download a template that Adaptive will provide you, um, and then go ahead and pop that into Adaptive through the manual import. Adaptive does also provide 24-7, 365 support to all of its clients. So everyone who purchases the software has access to that um, request system. So if you ever have a technical support issue, um, you are going to be able to get service pretty quickly. And then last piece here is just if you're ever confused about where you are in the system, kind of new into it and um, working through learning part, different parts of the system, you can always click on the little question mark. And that's going to be a context dependent knowledge base. It's going to guess what I need help with. So instead of having to ping uh, Dave and IT, I can actually just look um, in this knowledge base. It's going to tell me pretty much the same thing he would, just in simpler terms. So pretty easy to get answers to any questions you have. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and move into Sheets. So we're going to take a look at the P&L and some functionality here, and then we'll move into workforce planning. So you're going to notice a few things right away on the P&L. The first is green numbers and black numbers. Green numbers are your actual data. Black numbers are your plan data. So this plan data from, can come from a couple of places, and I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, but you'll also notice red carrots and blue carrots. So red carrots just mean someone's left a note there. They came in, entered an operating expense, just right click and added a note. And these are all going to aggregate at the bottom of one of the reports I show later. So you don't have to hunt through every single department's budget to actually address all of their comments. Blue carrots means it's calculated field. So if we look up at the formula bar, the syntax itself is pretty similar to Excel, with the primary difference that it's account-based. So instead of seeing something like A2 times B, 670 and having to go hunt for what on earth that actually is, you're actually able to see that this is taking an FTE account for my personnel model and just multiplying it by one of those assumptions or drivers that I mentioned. So um, pretty easy to pick up once you've written a couple of formulas. And if you ever need help building one, there's also a really nice formula assistant up here that you can use to just point and click at accounts you want to put into a formula. Um, some of you may have heard me clicking as well, and I know that does drive some um, Excel users insane. So you do have the option to navigate using keyboard shortcuts as well. So that's just something I always like to call out for y'all. Now, if someone has maybe an OPEX line item, they just know what their target budget is for the year. Or maybe you have a target number of units you're trying to sell and you wanna see that broken back seasonally. All you have to do is enter in uh, kind of your target value into one of the time roll ups. So 2023 in this case. And Adaptive has native financial intelligence to actually go ahead and break that back using my actuals from last year. So, a bunch of other options here too, but this one's usually um, the most used. Okay. And you can see that value, that 18K, has been broken back based on my actuals from last year. <clears throat> So that's pretty much the income statement. You'll notice I'm on Sales North again. So like I mentioned, as I save these changes, that's going to go ahead and roll up to the total company unless you've introduced some sort of like approval process that needs to happen first. Uh, last point here is we do have anomaly detection. So Adaptive does have machine learning, artificial intelligence that can highlight based on the two uh, past two years of actuals, kind of what is out of the expected bounds for your budget. From here, though, we are going to move into workforce planning. So I could always get there through Sheets, but we're actually going to get there directly from my salary and wages line on the income statement. So again, going from my output financial statement, I'm going to right click and explore cell and go ahead and go all the way through to my input sheet. So before I do go into that sheet, just wanted to call out that we know that there is a lot of security concerns around making sure that personnel data stays private. Some of you probably know that Workday um, 
kind of started as an HCM company. Um, so we do have a lot of security measures around being able to lock down employee data. And one of those is a checkbox for salary detail permission. If an individual doesn't have that check, they're not going to see the bottom half of the cell explorer. They'll just see the total GL balance. I'm going to follow this through to what we call a model sheet. So nomenclature isn't too important here. The main point is that you can drag whatever columns you want onto this. So we'll use this same type of sheet to track prepaids, to bring in your CRM opportunity data, anything like that just because of the flexibility of being able to bring whatever fields you want. Um, so a few things happening here. One, some of these you'll notice are dropdowns. And that basically means that these different dimension values, once I select them, they're pulling different drivers from my assumption sheet. So if anyone works internationally uh, or has to take in state or take state taxes into account for things like California and New York, especially, you can actually just have those set as drivers and adaptive. Every time you add a headcount in those locations, it's going to go ahead and pull those state or jurisdiction specific taxes in. You'll also notice I have two different lines for Will here. He's been split across two different departments. So this would be more for maybe R&D projects, or if you're in the healthcare space, maybe you split providers across different clinics, something along those lines. And so this is going to automatically allocate his employee burden, 60-40 across my two different departments, but that could be literally any dimension or dimensions that you would like to allocate employees across. Another use case for this might be, as you see here, projects if you are more in the consulting and services space. The last two things I'll say here, uh, if you right click and go into row detail, you'll see all of the calculations that we have in this model. These are completely configurable. So these are just the ones we included for demo purposes, but we work with you to actually figure out what's most relevant for you to see. The one I like to call out is taxes. So you can see that for Madeline, she hits her maximum for this, these specific taxes in June, adaptive notes to cut that off, and then resume that calculation again in 2024. Uh, so it'll go ahead and cut it off for the rest, of, rest of the fiscal year. For those of you who aren't on a standard January through December calendar, that is also completely fine. Adaptive can handle um, really any fiscal year that you're used to. We also have an option for alternate calendars if you have a couple of different ways that you need to be able to look at your data. If you do want to kind of start planning for new hires and want your department heads to have that power, you can always go ahead and just add new rows, copy a row if you're including a new, just a similar position, something along those lines. And as soon as I add these people in, again, as long as I don't have any approval process I have to go through, it'll go ahead and pop through to my income statement. So that's a very high level on workforce planning. This is a piece that we can get significantly more detailed on. So skills-based planning, capacity planning. Uh, right now I'm on an account executive list. So we could go into sales planning management, look at territories, just giving you an idea of the breadth of planning that you can do uh, outside of just the sheet that I'm showing. So next, I do want to start stepping through to our report. So we have two additional types of visualiz visualization and adaptive. One of those is going to be ad hoc reporting in browser. So I'm going to go ahead and pull two of those up. This is more for reports that you just want to be able to spin up in a minute or two, uh, probably a little less formatted. You want to do budget versus actuals real quick, something like that. So we're going to talk functionality, and then I'll show you how these are built. Functionally, uh, if you remember on the income statement a few moments ago, there was a red carrot on some of the cells. All of those notes are now flowing through right here. So I can see some explanations of variance, anything along those lines. You can have these not as footnotes and just put them in line, just personal preference there. Now, if you see a number like this, so this variance is way too high, we need to figure out what happened. 
you can actually still click into any of these numbers and open up that same cell explorer. And what's cool here is since we'll be integrated with your ERP, we can actually drill all the way through to transactions directly in adaptive. So this saves you one from having to ping accounting and ask them for transactions or hey, what journal entry is kind of driving this? And two, saves you from also having to even go back and dig through your ERP. We can add whatever columns you want here. So vendor, product, invoice ID, project, anything that you have in your ERP that you want tagged to actual. The other option for actually drilling into this report is to pivot it entirely. So if I wanna look at my salary and wages by a different dimension, I have a lot in here. You do not have to have this many, but you can just see the flexibility. I can pivot this entire report by function. And I'm now seeing salary and wages by different groupings of my department without having to build an entirely separate report. You can download these as Excel and PDF. And to actually edit them, if I come into the back end, this should look pretty similar to the interface that we saw for dashboards. And it'll be the same for Office Connect, but it's all drag and drop. So you have every element and adaptive available right over here including uh, some built-in calculations for things like variances. But the idea is if I wanna go ahead and pull in a different account, maybe I want to bring in FTE or something along those lines, just drag it over and then you're able to add fields like that, build out any type of report pretty quickly. This report after doing this for a while would probably take me two minutes or so to spin up. So it's pretty easy to learn. The one other report that I typically like to show here, and then I'll move into Office Connect and take a peek at some of the questions coming in, is just going to be this uh, financial statement and cash impact. So what's cool about Adaptive, like I said, everything's on one database. So you can look at things like your three financial statements stacked right on top of each other, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. And then again, I can mix in operational metrics or financial ratios. And so I have all of those calculated right down here as well. Okay, so that's web reporting. The last item I'm gonna cover is Office Connect. So Office Connect is our plugin to the Microsoft Office 365 suite, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. And so this is going to help you make the board decks that we all hate making a, or a lot faster. So this is meant to save you time slicing and dicing data, building out the same exact report over and over and over again, and give you more time to actually analyze that data, which is where the A and fp and a really should come in a little bit more. So if I highlight linked cells, you're going to see blue cells and green cells. Blue cells are linked directly to adaptive. Green cells are dynamic labels. So these will update as I refresh my report. Still, I retain the ability to explore cell back into adaptive. This is all security based, so it's not going to let me drill into anything that I shouldn't have access to. Again, that idea of going from outputs back to inputs. This is all, like I said, drag and drop. Interface is the almost the exact same as web reports. But the idea here is you're not going to have to reinvent the wheel. So if you already have a board reporting package or some sort of regular reporting that you do in Excel, PowerPoint, or Word, you can actually make it live. You don't have to uh, rebuild it all. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and finish building out this report, and then we'll refresh this to our April package. I'm just going to drag those accounts over. And so if I want to roll this forward to April, we are coming up on our next board uh, meeting. Come into workbook properties up here roll our report date forward by a month. So I'm just gonna pick the last Friday in April and refresh. You're gonna see all of those lines that I just dragged on populate and my labels update as well. Directly from this report, if I wanna start doing some ad hoc analysis, I can say, hey, what's underneath this specific line item and get um, a view of all of the individual GL accounts underneath here. 
Adaptive will also automatically sync up with any GL, GL accounts that are flowing in through Adaptive. So if I had added another GL account under payroll, it's going to automatically appear underneath there. And then also, if I want to kind of get this report for my sub department, something like that, you can just come into repeating reports, pick what you want to slice and dice this report by. I'm going to do levels since again, that's your organizational structure and just pick a couple of countries. I'm going to create. And at the bottom, you're going to see three new tabs. So for those three countries that I selected, again, this could be departments, projects, whatever you'd like, you'll see I now have that same report for South Korea, Canada, the US, and my total company view, all with that same Excel formatting retained as well. So when I refresh, it's not going to wipe any of that. You can have comments added in here. So it is still a very interactive way to build out reports. And then, like I mentioned, this does plug into a board present or PowerPoint as well. So if you come into Office Connect, much simpler menu, you just come in and refresh and all of your charts, tables, and even certain word ranges will update. So I see there's a question with which ERPs do you integrate with? All of them. So we do have native connectors to Sage Intact and NetSuite. But we've integrated with everything from Yardi to all of the SAP products, uh, N4, M3, any, uh, any, really anything. So we can, if you're more IT based, do APIs, JDBC, anything like that. So anything. So I've answered that one. From Tim, yes, we do actually have a workflow. So asking about the approval process I've mentioned a few times. That's something I would definitely recommend we follow up on, but it is a notification-based system that will actually, as you assign tasks to individuals, go ahead and email them, hey, you've been assigned something, you need to come into the system. Also emailing them if something runs late. And then you do also have a workflow menu to approve any budgets that have been submitted. So super safe harbor here, but we have a question from Michael. Is Office Connect roadmap to be expanded to Google Suite? Yes. Uh, timeline on that is TDD. We can talk to the Workday product team. I know it's a big demand. So short answer is yes. I'm not sure off the top of my head when that is going to come. Something we all often see is a couple of people in finance will have the Excel add-in, go ahead and refresh there, save it as a standard Excel file because you can do that and just upload it to the drive. So there is a way around that. How do you link to adaptive PowerPoint or adaptive to PowerPoint? Uh, it's the exact same way that I was showing our, uh, the Excel report is you're just copying and pasting charts and tables from the Excel board report that I showed, refreshing in the exact same way. How do you gain access to the workforce planning cube? That's all permissions based. So you can either restrict permissions based on level access or individual dimensions access. So there's a lot of security there and I would actually recommend that that can be a follow-up as well, uh, just to explore more security. And then probably my favorite question that's ever come through, can you model shareholder equity plans, grants, vesting, exercise, et cetera? Yes, we do have a couple of models for time since we have about five more minutes. I'm not going to go super into that today, but like I said, best question ever, and yes, we can. Yay, that's everybody. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Stan to close us out. Okay, thank you very much, Haley. Uh, thanks everyone for being so interactive, some great questions. And again, as Haley mentioned, we can certainly follow up in more detail after the webinar. So hopefully everyone saw how powerful, flexible, and especially how easy adaptive is to use with the simple drag and drop functionality. If you need more, we have plenty of resources we can make available to you, such as a one-on-one -on -one demonstration that speaks more to your specific needs. 
We can offer up return on investment sessions to quantify the value of this investment, hands-on workshops, and even get you a hands-on trial as well. Just let us know what makes sense for you and we can connect in our follow-up meeting or just reach out to me directly. We are happy to help you. We encourage you, we encourage you more to learn more about Revelwood and our implementation approach by visiting our website at revelwood.com. While you are there, we also encourage you to visit our Knowledge Center where we offer tips and tricks about all aspects of the planning process, technical tips on the tool, plenty of tips about the budgeting process and various tips on other business aspects of your FP&A model. Thanks again, everyone for attending. And one of my colleagues will be reaching out to you for a 15 minute follow-up call uh, here this week or in the near future. Hopefully you will take the time to share your feedback and let us know how else we can help. Have a great rest of the day, everyone, and thanks again for attending.